we are going to get started now. Um, so I would like to introduce, so Eric Enderton um, and Darren Grant will be talking about DPEL, our new digital production example library, which we just announced this morning as our newest hosted project. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over now. Thank you, Emily. <coughs> so David Moran mentioned this this morning. Uh, how often have you been developing a piece of software or a research idea and said, you know, I, I tried it on two spheres and, and it worked. I, I wonder if it would work on a film scene, right? So, so a lot of us for a long time uh, ha have dreamed of having um, a set of production strength assets that were freely available uh, for testing, uh, for benchmarking, and also for publishing. Being th the other thing that happens is the um, uh, the researcher gives a talk, and the studio guy says, well, yeah, but uh, is it going to work on our data? And the researcher says, well, sure, why don't you give me some data and I'll try it. And usually the conversation ends there, but if it goes one more step, it's, oh, well, here's the data, you can try it out. Oh, good, can I use this uh, to illustrate my paper? No. Uh, you know, you don't have, don't have permission for that, right? So, so the dream was to have this uh, collection of um, uh, digital assets that demonstrate the full complexity and scale of modern film production, and to have those available uh, to inspire new ideas, uh, to, for people to present them publicly, uh, and, and to publish papers, and uh, in this way to uh, help move film technology forward. So what's going to make this uh, useful to, uh, to R&D? Uh, well, it should be in a format that people can read, um, ideally something that can be read with free software, but, but even, even if not. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be the cleanest data ever. This is not a best practices uh, um, data set. It, it, it may be more sort of the, the warts and all, the crazy things that happen in production, and can your software handle it? Uh, and it needs to be in a. Uh, it needs to be licensed properly. So, uh, if I'm working at a company and I uh, want to use one of these things, and maybe I have to go to my legal department and say, "Well, what about this license?" It would help a great deal if that was a uniform license that the legal department has seen before, and they don't have to start from scratch. Um, so we looked at, uh, and, it ha and the license has to balance the concerns of the donors of this data and the people who are using it. Um, and so we looked at some of the open source licenses that were out there, and none of them, none of them exactly matched this. The thing that was closest, of course, was the Moana Island uh, license uh, when, when Disney released that, which was, was really uh, inspiring for all this work. Um, and so we negotiated a, a variation on that uh, among the various parties there at, at ASWF, uh, and we've got a digital asset license that's up on the website that anybody can use for, for whatever they want. Um, the, one of the things it says is that you're not allowed to take the, the resources and go make a movie with it. You know, again, that's not what this is about. This is test data. It's not a digital backlot. Um, and then when we say curated, part of what's happening here is if we, if the ASWF puts one of these assets in the library, we're kind of saying, yeah, we think this does represent the scale and complexity of, of current um, film production. And that's current, it's 2022, you know, will this be uh, production scale in 2032? Maybe not. But we're giving it that stamp and that stamp has a date on it, right? And as an aside, this is why the Academy Software Foundation is the perfect place for this project to occur. In terms of negotiating the license, we have the right people at the table. We have software vendors, hardware vendors, film studios. Um, and in terms of uh, sort of the expertise to, um, to do the curation, we can do that. And then on top of that, the Linux Foundation uh, has staff that could help us with um, how to get this stuff up on the web, advise us on legal matters, and so on. <clears throat> so what's the status today? We are extremely pleased to announce that uh, DPEL is launched today. Uh, it's there on that, at that uh, handy-dandy URL. Um, the license, as I said, was already out. That was, um, the license was one of the products of the working group when this started. The working group was led by Michael Johnson. Um, and uh, 
but the actual project is up. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a while, and it's really exciting to see it. And it has four really cool donations from four different companies already on there. So let's take a quick look at those. Our first asset um, that we initially worked with and we've gotten up there uh, was from the American Society of Cinematographers, and it's their STEM2 material. STEM1, the original STEM project was in, I think, 2004, as the industry was transitioning to digital projection and di digital imagery. And it was um, uh, images and, and footage to stress test digital projection systems uh, and to be able to talk about the quality of, of those. Um, they've, uh, the ASC has shot this 17-minute film, kind of a science fiction action film called The Mission, um, that's very carefully captured in high dynamic range, high resolution, various color gamuts, and then it's been packaged in um, uh, various formats and containers. It's about a terabyte of data in all that we've got up, posted up there. Uh, and this should be great for anyone who's trying to research novel compression techniques or uh, stress test a color pipeline um, or, or any kind of uh, display. So it's been uh, great working with them on, on getting, this, getting this launched. Another asset we have from AWS uh, is this character, Noah, who's the, the main character from a short film they made uh, called Spanner. And it's a fully rigged character for animation uh, and with the hair data sets. I'm excited about this. When we started DPEL, I thought it might be a couple of years before we had a, a rigged um, character. Rigs are something that everybody talks about, but there's very few examples really out there in the wild. It's a little bit of a black art. Everybody does it a little differently. So it's really, really neat to see a, um, a full animation rig here. Intel has uh, contributed this volumetric clouds library, uh, which comprises 30 VDB files in various densities. And then for each uh, of the uh, cloud shapes, it's represented in a small, medium, and large form. Um, the small form for quick tests. Uh, the medium size is roughly what one might use in production. The large size is a more aspirational uh, VDB size, some of them quite large indeed. Uh, and then for the fourth asset, here's, uh, as many of you know, Darren Grant, CTO of Animal Logic, to talk about A Lab. This is the. Uh, thank you so much, Eric, and then also uh, to the other uh, the other people who have been participating in the working group who have released these great assets, including uh, Michael Johnson, who's been doing so much testing for all of us. Um, so this is the A Lab reveal. Uh, maybe this is the first strip tease here on Microsoft Foundation. Here's the A Lab reveal. Uh, A Lab Phase Two. So why is it called Phase Two? So uh, those of you that are asset fans in the world, which I think this entire audience is. Uh, last year, we released uh, Animalogic A-Lab, uh, just about a year ago today, and you can see that it was an uh, uh, inventor's lab with a desk, but you can see over there in the corner on the bookshelf, there's some stuff missing. It was, it was our first attempt. We got out what we could for SIGGRAPH last year, and we promised you all that there would be more. And so today, uh, there is, oh, damn it. One more try. Oh, damn it. Show business. There we go. Uh, though today we have more, including uh, dancing characters. Uh, that's a looping animation that is available in the asset set. So, uh, what is phase two? Um, a picture uh, says a thousand words, as we all know, and uh, but a movie uh, uh, can tell a story. And so, rather than me talking, uh, I wanted to play this uh, movie that we've constructed, uh, directed by Grant Freckleton, one of our production designers at Animal Logic. Maybe. Ugh. How do I push? I need to click on the actual. Yeah. Ooh. Somebody click on the movie. It's okay. You can accept the risk. YouTube. Where do you get t-shirts? Uh, you have to uh, work at Animal Logic. 
Uh, I didn't have a job slide here, but we are hiring, much like the entire industry, for every position. So if you don't know what Grammarly is already, they are an all-in-one uh, writing tool. Well. You can download Grammarly as a browser extension. You just gotta click on the little player. As you see, the final shot in that film is the actual looping animation. Um, uh, I don't want to push the button and play Arcade Fire. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, as the movie said, there's a whole bunch of data in there. There's over 300 different USD assets, fully textured, 4K, Aces CG color space uh, uh, textures on all those things available as a separate download because it's a lot of data. And, and then also uh, there's uh, uh, also there's uh, uh, big procedurals. So you saw that there's a looping animation about those two characters. Those characters have fur, they have fabric on them. Dr. Goggles McFerrickstein uh, has a wonderful sweater. All of that is baked out, thank you, uh, is baked out uh, animation, procedural caches uh, for you to use. And then there's lots of Easter eggs in there as you pull, as you go around the environment. Uh, definitely look at the textures. There's some funny phrases, and including that character turntable that you saw. Uh, why did we share this? We really want people to use the assets, just like Eric said, um, having, having, a, having asset sets out that are the real production environment uh, for people to uh, test hardware or software, do training, uh, education for students. That's really the intention of this. There's no other, no other intention except to have a little fun. And so please go to animalmagic.com slash ALAB and uh, download that. Thank you. That was great and very funky. So what's next? Oh, I forgot to put a link here to, um, we have a page on our wiki of links to other open assets that are out there on, on the web that can be useful. Um, we have this great stuff, hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes for your enjoyment, uh, but it's just the beginning. Um, there's a, a wish list page for, for things if you are a developer and have some sort of specific type of data that you would like to have access to, come talk to us about adding it to the wish list. If you're a studio, think about, you know, last time that you uh, picked up a piece of software or a research project, what do you wish they had tested it on and do you have something like that in-house that you could potentially, um, potentially release? Uh, I think one area for future growth is materials. Um, the uh, materials in the, stuff, in the scenes we have so far um, tend to be sort of um, standard surface or preview level materials, uh, and, there, and there's more room to grow. The, um, uh, in the, if you heard the Material X session, the Open Chess Set project is a, is a great step in that direction. Um, and please do join us. Here's the, uh, uh, the URL again, and uh, come find us on Slack. Thank you to the, the whole TSC and everybody else who helped. Thanks.
Okay, so we will open it up for any questions. Okay, virtually. This question for Darren. It's from uh, Jeremy Cowles. And uh, Jeremy says that looks like an amazing update. Uh, and he asks, does the A Lab 2 have USD physics uh, in there anywhere? No. Okay. No, it does not. So the answer is no. Maybe um, phase three. Put it on the <laughs> wish list. So um, this is a question for the ASC. I don't know that we have anyone from them there. So the question from Sean is. Uh, Will ASC DPEL release footage with reference color charts? I think there are, I'm going to try and answer this one. Um, I think some of the stuff, some of the larger groups of assets, um, like the EXR versions of stuff, I don't, do we have those up yet, Eric? I don't think we Not do. Not quite. Those are coming soon. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so coming soon. Um, it's a great question. Uh, I, I don't know the answer, but I do think that. Um, things are calibrated in such a way that you should be able to essentially figure that out. Um, if they're not, you know, Macbeth up at the front of the thing there, I think they're, um, And they, yeah. you know, they were mastered in ACES and there's um, yeah. a color space designation on each of the files and stuff. So there, there is a bunch of information in there, whether they're specifically color charts, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think from the metadata perspective, yeah. you should be fine, but it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a good question. Jeremy says thumbs up to uh, Darren. Uh, that's all we have so far on Zoom. Anybody else on Zoom live wants to ask a question, we will be happy to forward it. And uh, if there's anyone in the room with a question, I will hand over the microphone or not. All right. Thanks again. See you on Slack. Okay. Let's give it up. Another round of applause. <laughs>